finishing up chapter 5, uh, we're moving on. Uh, Paul is uh, going to cover relationships and the importance of them. Uh, it says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. We're not to be competing with one another, but as a team, we're to work together for the glory of God. In Philippians 2, 3, it says, uh, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Peter covers in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, it says, Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. I've uh, noticed myself that uh, today it's quite popular for uh, Christians to get uh, involved in a lot of psychology. And I notice they become very self-centered. Uh, it seems like their self-esteem becomes more important than submitting themselves one to another. And uh, my self-esteem isn't as important as working together with other people to try and build the body of Christ. Ephesians 5.22, it says, Wives, oh, this is difficult. <laughs> this is going to be a fun uh, thing to go through. I'm not, I'm not going to go through it too thoroughly, but uh, hopefully enough to, to bring about what I really believe uh, Paul is trying to say here. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22, it says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church his body, and is himself his Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Difficult scripture, especially in these times that we live in today. Uh, the world looks at this scripture and just says, oh, you guys are just uh, crazy. But uh, even in the opinions of uh, many uh, renowned, uh, I, I did quite a lot of research, found a lot of renowned marriage counselors and many psychologists, and they're trying to say that uh, some infidelity in some marriages uh, can really enhance a marriage relationship. I'm going, why would anybody say something like that? Well, because these people are of the world, that's why. Uh, God is looking for us to have an intimate relationship with the person we married. In Ephesians 5.10, it says, uh, Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. So we won't, don't want to be deceived by people that say things that are contrary to the word of God. Paul's been talking about impurity with uh, all through this chapter, and uh, we're being uh, people are being led astray by immorality, and and uh, he wants us to abstain from impurity in a marriage. Uh, in Hebrews thirteen four, it says, "Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexual immoral, all the sexually immoral." So what uh, these people are trying to say will enhance your marriage, God's calling them adulterers. Uh, today, uh, so many uh, young people, so many people, young and old maybe, uh, they look at marriage as a legality uh, that's really just not required. Uh, according to the Bible, marriage is an outward commitment of the joining together of this man and this woman. Very important. Showing the world, this is my wife, this is my husband, we're joined together, we're one in Christ. Uh, in verse 22, the submission being talked about is one of faithfulness to your husband. Just as we're faithful to the Lord, and don't look for another Savior. You've been out looking for another Savior, you won't find him. Be satisfied with the Savior we have, look to him. And just as we're faithful to the Lord, and don't look for another Savior, the wife is to be faithful to her husband and not be looking around for our, another husband. And uh, this submission is not about making the husband uh, the mediator between the wife and God. It's, oh, i got to go to my husband. Make sure this is a, you know, ask him to take this to God for me. Uh, no, 1 Timothy 2, 5, uh, Paul Paul's writing this too. He says, for there is only one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus. 
And you know, you can come up with questions in the world today, a lot of worldly arguments. Is, uh, they say, well, a person who makes the most money, uh, they, they allow money to dictate who leads in a marriage. And whoever's making the most money in a marriage is the person who's supposed to be head of that relationship. Well, statistics today state that 41% of uh, married women earn more than their husbands. Uh, so does that put the wife as the leader in that household? Uh, does she become the head of that household? When we become one in a marriage, that means we become one. All things become in common to both of us. So uh, how finances are handled, uh, it's a working together process, working with what's available, not who made the most money. Because marital relationships are not built on money but they're built on submitting to each other. Our value is not in the income we make, but our value is what we are in Jesus Christ. So it's two people deciding on how these responsibilities are to be handled. It's not uh, one becoming more important than the other. Uh, because of Adam's disobedience, there's always been division in marriages that needs to be worked out. In uh, Genesis 3.16, uh, the G God was telling uh, Eve, he says, And uh, you will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. Well, this wasn't God uh, commanding this is how things are to be. This is God saying this is how it's going to be because of sin. Uh, because we live in the flesh, women will be tempted to control their husband. And men will be tempted to rule over their wives. And Paul's laying down God's plan for marriage that we would strive to live in God's plan as we join together in holy matrimony. Because in the beginning, God created woman as man's helper. It says, Then the Lord God said, It's not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. But being a helper isn't the lesser person. <laughs> we want to Look right at it. I've said it many times, and my example, my best example, is the Holy Spirit is our helper. And I'll never be as great as the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells in me. Why does he dwell in me? He helps me to become what God wants me to be. Helps me to learn the Word of God. Helps me to see what God is doing. He's my helper. In John 14, 26, it says, But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all three, all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So the Holy Spirit is far greater than we are, yet he is our helper. So being classified a helper uh, doesn't mean that we are a lesser person, but it does mean we are subject to the person we are helping. You know, the Holy Spirit's not going to force himself on us. He's not going to come by and say, I'm ruling over you, bud. No, the Holy Spirit only comes if you want his help. He's only going to help those that are open to receive. And it's the same thing in a marriage. A wife can't force her husband to accept her help. He has to receive it. To be helped by his wife, the husband must be open to receive. God has an order to everything he does. First he created man. Then he created woman. So he created man with XY chromosomes, and the woman came out with XX chromosomes. Today you've got people uh, shouting and screaming. It doesn't matter what chromosomes you got. Uh, you just uh, become what you want to be. If you think you're a man, you're a man. If you think you're a woman, and well, I don't need to go into all that. We're all aware of what's going on there. But uh, God created a man with XY chromosomes and a woman with XX chromosomes, and that's what a man and a woman is. And so the, the husband and the wife are there to work together to obey God's first command. In Genesis 1.28, in the New Living Testament, it says, But then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Well, uh, today in a lot of modern society, there's a lot of men and women that aren't interested in uh, being fruitful. In other words, that was talking about having children. Uh, they'd rather take the care of the men in the abortion clinic than take care of them at home. Um, 
They're only interested in their selfish desires. They're only interested in their uh, recreational sexual activities. Uh, and, you know, this attitude's also crept into the church in many places. We want to be those that we don't allow it to creep into our lives. In Ephesians 5.25, moving on here, it says, For husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. No one hates his own body but feeds and cares for it, just as Christ cares for the church. And we are members of his body. Well, here's a very good explanation on how the husband is to love his wife. Uh, and uh, because of sin, we all fail. If you haven't failed, well, I'd like to talk to you because I'd like to know how not to do that. But uh, my goal isn't to fail, but to succeed. And uh, we're not to be angry or indignant or irritated or embittered with our wives and uh, be commanding over her. And the wife, uh, she has to be willing to live with her husband, not forced to. It's not like, uh, okay, wife, I have the husband, you're the wife. You do what I want. You're here for my good. If I need my back scratched, you scratch it. Well, that's not uh, the way life is. It's uh, the wife has to be willing to live with her husband. Uh, when we allow immorality, self-esteem, selfishness, things like that nature to come into our marriage, well, it, you know, divorce is on the horizon. Uh, God didn't give man a wife so she can puff him up and tell him how wonderful he is and, you know, keep his ego stoked and so on and so forth. God gave man a wife to be his partner and helpmate. Marriage is to be centered on the well-being of the family. These things uh, that have been written here are to encourage us to strive to be that person that makes our marriage work. Biblical headship of a husband is to deny himself. Don't be selfish. Place your wife's needs and her feelings above your own. And Paul sums up this chapter saying, Therefore, coming right out of Genesis, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I'm saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. So I've made this statement many times, many videos, many teachings, and classes I've taught. Um, it's the man who leaves his family and joins to his wife. Well, I noticed today that a lot of uh, men, they make their wives leave their family behind and uh, join him. And they, he wants nothing to do with her family. Again, that's sin. It's not the plan of God. Because it says the husband should leave. He's joining himself to the wife. He's uh, gone in and it's, uh, in Ecclesiastes, there's a place that says he's gone and looked at this beautiful garden and he wants uh, part of this wants to be a part of it and, and the beautiful garden is the, the woman that's going to be his wife and when they finally make all the arrangements he uh, enters into the garden becomes one with uh, his wife and so it's the wife that allows the husband into her life but it's the husband that's joining her and so the final statement in this chapter is that men are to love their wives as they love themselves and people say, oh, I don't love myself. I'm just a wicked person. How could I love myself? Well, you feed yourself, you clothe yourself, you wash yourself, you go to work. And, I mean, uh, there's got to be some love for yourself or you wouldn't do any of that. And so men are to be, they're called to love their wives as they love themselves. And if a wife is receiving that kind of love and care, it's uh, easier for her to respect that man that she married and respect what she's receiving. I hope that this helps.
in your relationship or relationship that you might have in the future because that was Paul's intent and that's my intent too.